Hello, this is the final tale from Ruth Manning Sanders' A Book of Magic Animals, the 11th story. And it's a German story called Elsa and the Bear. There was once a forester who had a poor wife and an only daughter called Elsa. He also had a little white poodle, and this little poodle always ran out of the house to greet him when he came home each day from his work in the king's forest. Well now, one afternoon the forester had ridden a long way into the forest, and he came to a place that was quite unknown to him. In fact, he had ridden right over the border of the king's forest into another forest. And he was just about to turn back when he saw a nut tree, whose branches were bowed almost to the ground, with a heavy weight of yellow nuts as big as lemons. So he thought no harm in picking two of those nuts to carry home, one for his wife and one for Elsa. So there he is, down from his horse and picking two nuts, and putting them one in each pocket. He was just about to get on his horse again, when there came from behind the tree a roaring and a growling, and a huge black bear leaped out upon him. How dare you pick my nuts, roared the bear. The forester was a brave man and quick-witted. He said to himself, If you can speak, my good fellow, you're no bear. You must be some kind of wizard or sorcerer in disguise. So he answered as politely as he knew how. Ach, gracious lord, I am the king's forester, but it seems I have strayed beyond my beat. I saw this tree and was astonished. Never before have I beheld such right and beautiful nuts. But you had no right to pick them, growled the bear. Why did you pick them? Gracious Lord, I picked but two nuts to carry home and show to my wife and daughter, that they might marvel at them even as I marvel. I will gladly pay for them if you will name a price. The bear said, I have no need of money. My price is what first comes running to meet you on your return home today. I will come with a carriage tomorrow and fetch my price. Is that agreed? Or shall I hear and now hug you to death? It, it is agreed, gracious lord, said the forester. But he thought, ach, my dear little white poodle, you will always want to meet me so joyously when I come home. Must I then give you to the bear? Yet, ach, better I should lose you than that I should leave my wife a widow and my daughter fatherless. So, with a heavy heart, the forester got on his horse and rode off. It was some time before he found his way out of the strange forest, but at last he came into the road that led towards home. He set his horse at a gallop. Now he could see his wife standing in the doorway. Now he should have seen the little white poodle scampering to meet him. But, alas, alas, what did he see? He saw his dear daughter Elsa running joyfully towards him with the little white poodle in her arms. He reined in his horse, he jumped from the saddle. Elsa tiptoed to kiss him. She said, Why do you look so sad? Isn't it right that I should come to meet you? No, not today. Oh, not today, my darling. But come, let us go in. So, they walked together to the house, he leading the horse, Elsa with her arm through his, and the little white poodle trotting behind. The stable boy was waiting to take the horse. The forester and Elsa went indoors. He had one nut in either pocket. They were so heavy, so heavy, they seemed to be weighing him down. He took them out of his pocket. What were they now? 
two great lumps of glittering gold. One for you, my wife, says he, and one for you, my little daughter. Ah, how they exclaimed, how they clapped their hands and jumped for joy. But the forester laid his arm on the table, and his head on his arm, and groaned, and groaning, he told them all that had happened. Well, then, says his wife, no need to grieve. We'll dress up the servant girl in it, her go instead. How should a bear know the difference between one girl and another girl? Elsa said, oh, no, we can't do that. Her mother said, hold your tongue. The forester said, it's a bad business, but that will be best. So, next morning, Elsa's mother told the servant girl that she might take a holiday and go to the fair. She dressed the girl up finely in Elsa's Sunday clothes. The girl looked smart and was well pleased with herself, and scarcely was she dressed and ready when they heard the rumbling of wheels outside, and there in a cloud of dust came a carriage drawn by two brown bears, and inside the carriage sprawled the great black bear. The black bear put his head out of the carriage window. Is she ready? <coughs> yes, ready and waiting, said the forester. He took hold of the servant girl and pushed her, struggling and screaming, into the carriage. The carriage immediately drove off. Now nothing could be seen of it but a cloud of dust, and soon even that vanished from sight. The forester heaved a sigh of relief. The wife laughed, but Elsa said, It's not right. I know it's not right. Inside the carriage, the servant girl was shaking with sobs. The great black bear laid his head on her lap and said, Tickle me, scratch me softly and tenderly, or else I will eat you skin, bone and all. Get away, get away, you ugly beast, shrieked the servant girl. She flung the carriage door open, jumped out and ran to hide in the bushes by the roadside. Bah, said the bear, you're not the right one and he drove back to the forester's house. There he was now, out of the carriage and up on his hind legs, banging on the door and roaring and growling. If you don't keep promise true, I'll pull the house down over you. I'll eat up father, eat up mother, I'll have my true bride and no other. I'm coming, cried Elsa, and before anyone could stop her, she'd run out of the house and jumped into the carriage. Her father shouted, her mother screamed, the great black bear scrambled back into the carriage. Away went that carriage in a cloud of dust, away and away, and was lost to sight. Then the great black bear laid his head on Elsa's lap and said, Tickle me, scratch me, softly and tenderly, or else I will eat you skin, bone and all. I don't believe you'll do that, said Elsa. Why should you? And she put out her hand and stroked the bear's rough, shaggy head. Oh, go on stroking, go on stroking, said the bear. So Elsa went on stroking the bear's head. And by and by he gave a great sigh and said, Oh, yes, you're the right one. All this time, the carriage was whizzing along as if in a storm wind, uh, as if a storm wind was blowing it. It had now left the road and was crashing its way through the king's forest, bumping against trees, tearing up the ground, but whirling ever on. Right through the king's forest it went, and out of the king's forest and into the forest that lay beyond. Then, suddenly, it vanished, and Elsa and the bear were standing under an nut tree. The bear struck the trunk of the nut tree with his snout. The trunk opened and they went through into a narrow passage. At the end of the passage was an iron door. 
Are you brave, maiden? said the bat. I tried to be brave, said Elsa. Dear maiden, said the bat, all may yet be well, if you can trust me and do exactly as I tell you to do. I will trust you and do exactly what you tell me, said Elsa. Then get on my back, put your two arms around my neck, and clasp your hands together. Don't look hither, don't look tither. Look before you, not behind you. Then no evil thing shall bind you. Keep as still as any mouse, and bring a blessing on my house. Elsa did as the bear told her. She got on his back, leaned forward, and clasped her two hands together round his neck. Then the bear touched the iron door with his snout. The door opened, and they went through into a great room. Oh, horror! That room was full of all manner of hideous little creatures. Toads, <coughs> and snakes, bats, and owls, and small gibbering monkeys. The snakes hissed, the toads crawled up Elsa's legs, the bats and owls flapped in her face, the monkeys screamed and tried to drag her off the bear's back. Was Elsa frightened? She was. But she did as the bear had told her. She looked neither to right nor left. She looked straight in front of her and kept her hands clasped around the bear's neck. So they passed through the room and came to a second door. A silver door this one was, and the door, at the door the bear stopped and said, My heart, are you still there? Yes, I'm still here on your back, says Elsa. Keep your hands clasped together, says the bear, and remember, don't look hither, don't look thither, look before you, not behind you, then no evil thing shall bind you. Keep as still as any mouse, and bring a blessing on my house. Then the bear touched the silver door with his snout. It opened, and they went through into another great room. Oh, me! If the things in the first room had been terrible, the things in the second room were worse. There were huge monsters, huge hot monsters breathing out flames, and huge cold monsters breathing out icy breaths. One moment Elsa seemed to be all on fire, the next moment she seemed to be freezing to death. Oh, how terrified she was! But <coughs> she did as the bear had told her. She looked neither to right nor left, she looked straight forward and kept her hands clasped around the bear's neck, and so, just as she thought she could endure the torment no longer, but she must surely die, the bear had crossed the room and stood before a third door, the door of glittering gold. My heart, are you still there? Yes, I am still here on your back, whispered Elsa. The bear pushed open the golden door. He gave a leap, he shook Elsa off his back, she crouched, almost fainting, with her hands before her face. There was a flash of lightning, a clap of thunder, then silence. And then a voice saying, Now look hither, now look thither. Look before you, look behind you. Evil spells no more shall bind you. See, my darling, see, see, how all my house now blesses thee. Someone raised Elsa to her feet. Where was she now? Standing in a beautiful room, surrounded by a crowd of gallant lads and laughing maidens, and best of all clasped in the arms of a handsome prince. Elsa, dear Elsa, said the prince, I am your bear, whom you have delivered from the vile spell of a saucer. These lads are my faithful companions, whom the sorcerer turned into the horrible creatures that sought to torment you. These maidens are those who failed in the task that you have so bravely accomplished. I carried them through the rooms, but they looked hither, they looked hither. 
They fell through the floor and lay as dead, awaiting their deliverer. Elsa, dear Elsa, will you be my wife? Yes, Earth will be your wife, said Elsa. Then all the maidens clapped their hands and all the youths shouted, Hurrah! Outside the forests disappeared, and where the forests had been there were towns and villages and farms and fields, with the prince's palace shining above all. The prince sent a golden coach to fetch Elsa's father and mother to the palace. They came in their best clothes and the little white poodle came with them. Elsa was married to her handsome prince. The gallant lads each chose one of the laughing maidens for his bride. There were weddings and weddings and more weddings and rejoicings beyond telling. They sang, they danced. The little white poodle got up on his hind legs and danced with the best of them. Everyone was happy, and may we be happy also. Thank you.